Hello and welcome back to Gub Farm. The plan over the next two months is to plant about 1550 hazelnut trees. And this week two issues have come up which are creating a lot of uncertainty as to how that is going to play out. So first up, I have applied for an agroforestry grant from DERA, which is the Department of Agriculture in Northern Ireland. And over the course of this week, they have sent out representatives to meet with me to talk through my planting plan and what my objectives are. And two issues have arisen. So first up, they would like to see the trees planted in the grid, five metres by five metres. So rows, just a perfect grid. And their reasoning for that is as the trees grow, they will shade out the ground below them and they want to leave plenty of room um, for animals to graze around the trees. I, however, want to establish hazelnut trees that will grow to about two metres and I am planting them at five metres by 3.5. So I will have rows five metres apart and within the rows, the trees will be 3.5 metres apart. The second issue is planting density. They would like to see 400 trees planted per hectare under the scheme. So I submitted my planting plan and they came out and said, okay, there's a number of issues here. First up, you want to plant at five meters by 3.5 meters and that's not allowed in the scheme. So I explained, you know, it's a smaller tree. It doesn't shade as much light from the underlying ground. And this is about creating a cash crop as well. And the big issue that I have, if they want me to go to five meter spacing within the rows, I'm going to lose about about 30% yield. Because in every 10 meters or 10.5 meters, I can plant three trees. Whereas if I have to plant them at five meters apart, I can only get in two trees. So I'm going to lose about 30% um, yield. And that has quite a significant impact to me. So if I'm losing about 500 trees, that means each tree I expect to yield about two kilos of de-shelled nuts and the nuts will sell for about, hopefully at least a tenner per kilo. So 500 by two by 10 is 10,000 pounds a year. So it is a five figure grant, but it is foolish for me to take the grant if I am to give up um, future revenue. So that's the first issue. The second issue is the planting density. When the scheme was drawn up, I think they reference large regular shaped fields. And the problem I have here in this small rural farm that hasn't been intensively managed is that the fields are all still quite small and irregular shapes. So around the fields, I have to leave a boundary for machines to access the trees. And that's going to be about six meters around the fields. So if you have a big field, that's a relatively insignificant amount of land. But if you have small fields, then it's disproportionately large. So if you have narrow strips or triangles, um, it's just not possible to get to 400 trees per hectare. They've been great. We're talking. I've lodged an appeal. I put forward my case. I've said what I'm trying to achieve and I now have to just wait and see if, if the appeal will be accepted. But you know, the, it is an environmental farming scheme. I am trying to embrace it wholeheartedly in terms of um, establishing trees, a significant focus on regenerative agriculture, going down the organic route. So I really want to leave the environment in a better place than I found it. So I think in, in terms of the spirit of the scheme, you know, I, I completely embrace it and represent what it is about. So I am hoping that, you know, they will see that and, and, and make an exception for what I'm trying to achieve. So the second big problem that's arisen is if you have come to me by Facebook or maybe even on YouTube and ever seen comments about where do you get your trees, 
I will always talk about fruit and nut and a guy who's amazing called Andy Wilson. Now here's the thing about Andy, over the last two years I've never met the man, never even talked to him because he didn't want to talk, didn't want to meet and I've just um, just had to take a big leap of faith when I was sending him money hoping that the trees would turn up and he's been amazing. Um, anytime I have a question, no matter what time of the day or night, he always seems to reply. And over the last two years, I've got to know the man simply by swapping emails with him. And he's just a leading light in Ireland and a fountain of knowledge um, for how to grow hazelnut trees. The guy's been brilliant. Um, so one of the things we have done is, I had a chat with Andy about 10 days ago, <clears throat> or two weeks ago, and I said, Andy, we're setting up a WhatsApp group um, an Irish um, hazelnut grower group, so representation from Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, just getting together to share knowledge. And I said, would you like to join? And he said, he won't join, but he'll answer any questions that we have. He said, he just doesn't want to spend any more time in front of a computer than he has to. So on this group this week, we were chatting, and uh, one of the members of the group turned around and said, Andy has passed away. And I nearly fell off the chair. I was just chatting to the guy 10 days ago. Just blew me away. So I phoned up and sure enough, um, he passed away on, on, on the 4th of December. He'd, he'd had a heart condition, which is why he never wanted to meet with people apparently. He just wanted to keep his stress down. And the chaps passed away. And um, from in terms of knowledge, it's, it's a tremendous loss to the, to the Irish community. He had so much knowledge in his head around hazelnuts, just such a loss. But, um, yeah, it's very sad. So now this leads to very interesting questions. You know, he's a sole trader. Um, I spoke to a wonderful uh, Dutch lady, um, I think I'll pronounce her name correctly, Metje. Not sure, but she's been brilliant. And um, I talked to one of the chaps that's working with him, I think a supplier, John. And this could have got very messy because I'm dealing with a sole trailer. I've put down a sizable deposit for the next batch of threes. And they've been great that they're, they're now trying to work to source as many threes as they can and fulfill the orders that people have placed. And it must be an absolute nightmare for them because they've no access to his computers and bank accounts and all this. So, um, so now there's a lot of uncertainty over will I get the threes? How many threes will I get? <clears throat> and I just don't know the answer to that. But I just want to say to the Dutch lady, Metje and John, um, I can't imagine how much of a headache this is for you. And just thank you so far for all the support you're offering. Um, it just must be, it must be such a very difficult time for you. So I'm now left with a lot of uncertainty. Will I get the grant for the agroforestry scheme? If I do get the grant, will I get the trees to fulfill the requirements of the grant? Um, so yeah, when I set up this channel, I said I would share the highs and the lows. And to be fair with you, this is it's kind of a low point. Um, I, in the fullness of time, all of these issues will sort themselves out. And it's just, it's just, um, something that requires a lot of thinking right now and I've, I was thinking a lot about this you know I think uncertainty is probably the thing that causes the most stress in our life and when we know the outcome we can then plan and move forward so right now there's a lot of uncertainty and it's um, requiring a lot of thought to plan and stay ahead of it so there's a lot of questions now if I don't get the threes should I still go ahead and start the the establishment of the coppicing forest that I'm thinking about starting next week. Do I start marking out the fields and planning? And if I don't and the trees turn up, I'll, I won't be ready. So I think I have to bite the bullet and proceed on the basis that trees will turn up and everything will work out. And I think I just have to push ahead. I'm going to start working on the coppicing forest. That'll be probably the next video now I will do, is starting to um, get that established. I'll start lining out the fields and marking out the fields and um, getting my planting um, plan lined out in the fields. So there's lots to do there. Um, and I have to now hope that I will get the threes. And I just don't know how this is gonna play out. So, um, 
yeah interesting times i'd like to say look at anybody who's closely connected with andy if you're watching this the guy was brilliant um it's a tremendous loss for the community in ireland he's so much knowledge that disappeared with the man and hopefully his writings and notes can be made public so we can all learn from it and get some goodness um, from his research. So on that note, um, until next time, good luck.